Please hang up and try again. Hey, what's up everyone? Louis Tran here. And I was actually supposed to review the original Microsoft Surface Book right when it came out, but it was just too much of a frustrating experience to even use. So I right away returned it and I actually gave it another chance by exchanging it. Or I still had issues where I was just detaching and reattaching the screen and it caused the blue screen of death, the device overheated, as well as the having the... Um, you know the battery life being unpredictable as well so you know I just didn't want to deal with it anymore and um, now after Mark releasing a whole bunch of updates I heard that uh, the Surface Book is pretty rock solid so now we fast forward into 2016 uh, Microsoft announced the uh, Surface Book with performance base better video card uh, better battery life as well as better overall performance so this is uh, Hey, excuse the lawnmower outside, it's freaking annoying. But anyway, uh, let's get right into this review. Okay, as always, here's the unboxing. Here's the Surface Book, here's the Surface Pen. Done. Wanna see that again? Sorry about that, guys. I didn't record myself unboxing this the first time. Anyway, moving right along. Out of the box, the Surface Book looks stunning. Like what you used to expect from Apple Stunning. It has a premium quality magnesium build and feels absolutely solid. Also back is the fulcrum hinge which I like because it makes it look unique. People complain about dust getting on the device but that's because their bags are dirty. I don't have that problem. The Surface Book is slightly thicker and heavier from the previous models weighing 3.68 pounds and 0.59 inches thick which is actually a small price to pay for increased performance and battery life. We need to let go of thinking that Windows laptops are cheaply made devices. The Surface Book is a prime example of a premium device. The Surface Book features two standard USB ports and a full-size SD reader on the left, and on the right resides a mini display port as well as the magnetic power and dock connector. Would have been nice to have at least one USB-C or Thunderbolt 3 connector for future proofing, but for the majority of the world, it's not a big deal at this point. Maybe in a year or two. I am hoping Microsoft would at least release a dock with a USB-C support. The Surface Book features a high resolution 13.5 inch 3000 by 2267 PPI display with a 3x2 screen ratio, which Microsoft calls Pixel Sense. It is excellent for reading and working on documents, but since it's not, a moving viewing ratio, you will get those black lines, which isn't too big a deal. Unlike the new MacBook Pros, not being limited to a touch bar makes interacting with your work or viewing websites much more engaging. For instance, being able to zoom in and zoom out from the screen on websites, photos, and documents is very useful. How this changed the game for me at work is having my VP review and sign documents right on the spot. I just open the PDF, detach the screen, hand her the tablet, or what Microsoft calls the clipboard and she zooms into the signature portion and signs it with the service pen. No need to email and print out anything, reducing some extra steps and getting things done. Speaking of the service pen, yes, it's included right in the box. I use this thing more often than I thought I would. And I'm not an artist and I can't draw for crap, but I notice myself taking much more notes in meetings and conference calls than I used to. Writing with a pen feels very natural and has virtually no lag. And the best part is that you can erase with this thing. OneNote launches so easily with the click of the Surface Pen and I start writing things down. It also works great with Evernote, but since OneNote doesn't require a subscription, I'll be using that 100% once my Evernote expires. The Surface Book features an Intel 2.6GHz Skylake dual core processor. Sorry, still no Cabby Lake this year. The one I'm using has 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gig hard drive, and the NVIDIA 965M 2 gig RAM GPU. Overall performance has been rock solid. After all of Microsoft's patches and updates since the initial release of the original Surface Book, using this has been a great experience. Navigating through the OS, launching and using my daily productivity apps such as Microsoft Office, Chrome, etc. had no issues at all. Trackpad is as good as the previous Surface Book, so that's a good thing. Still the second best compared to the Force Touch on the Apple MacBooks though. As for the keyboard, it is probably the best keyboard out there. It's clubs in really close or tied or maybe better depending on what uh, your opinion is uh, next to the pre-2016 Retina MacBook Pros. 
It's really quiet and has excellent travel. Detaching the screen and using it as a clipboard or tablet to take notes has been stable and has not crashed since I've been using this since launch date. The only issues that I've run into is that scaling gets a little funky on some apps when docking and undocking, but this could easily be fixed by exiting the application and relaunching it. Hard drive is not as fast as the new MacBook Pros, Crystal Mark benches 1525 by 595 read and write. Apple's hard drive speeds are crazy fast, but in real world usage, it's not that big of a deal, unless you're moving around large files as part of your workflow, like 4K videos. With the new upgraded hardware in the 2016 Surface Book, people will wonder how well this thing does on games. Well, I spend more time on a console and this thing does a great job with PS4 Remote Play, but it would be a pretty lame way to test game performance. Well, the new Surface Book handles games like Tomb Raider and Overwatch just fine, but you need to turn down the resolution to 1080, make other adjustments such as turning off vertical sync. Playing this at native will slow it down to a crawl and will have fans blasting due to pushing the processor hard. Other than that, most of the modern games are pretty much playable, but don't expect this to perform as well as a gaming laptop or a desktop. But keep in mind that this is so far the only hybrid that we can even discuss playing games on. I don't use Adobe Premiere and I do all my work through Final Cut on a Mac, but according to other reviews such as Techno Buffalo, they report that it runs much better than the previous Surface Book editing in 4K. Microsoft advertises to 16 hours of battery life on the new Surface Book. Whatever. The majority of my daily workflow consists mainly of Chrome, Microsoft Office, such as Outlook, Excel, and Word, signing PDFs, etc. And I get about 9 to 11 hours max, which is better than the previous service book that I had, which clocked at about 7 to 9 hours. I've actually forgotten to leave the charger at home a couple of times, but I don't have to worry often when I leave the house because it could last an entire workday with plenty of power left to spare. I also have the 15 inch 2016 MacBook Pro and the Surface Book clearly outlasts Apple's new laptop. Overall, the Surface Book is the best hybrid laptop device money can buy and showcases Windows 10 at its best. It is very well constructed, well designed, and powerful enough to give even the higher end laptops a run for their money. Performance combined with excellent battery life makes this an incredible mobile device. Only things that I wish this had was a Cabby Lake processor, a Nvidia 10 series video card, and at least one USB-C port. Other than that, I really like the service book and recommend it. However, just keep in mind that the new service book with all of those things is probably not too far away. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.